Let's look in this video at creating an ebook from Word to Publisher to PDF. This is actually a very long tutorial, so take your time, pause, and work your way through it carefully. Important detail to read first, page size. What page size should you use to start with? Standard 8.5 by 11 inch page size ensures any included images will be large enough for an iPad. And that's in portrait mode. Normally you won't design an ebook in landscape. So 11.5, 8.5, sorry, by 11 inch in portrait. And you can see the millimeter sizes, or in other words, a standard letter brackets US size page. And if you ask what page size should I make my document, it doesn't matter. You see, there's no fixed pagination in ebooks, and our resulting document will be a PDF going to ebook. The reader gets to customize their font, font size, and spacing preferences. So a book that's 200 pages in print could be 300, 400, 500, even 1,000 pages on a Nook, Kindle, iBook, iPhone, or other reader. EPUB files, that's the standard ebook format, are designed to make the text flow in this manner across multiple devices. Keep this in mind when designing your ebook PDF file. All that being said, if you're writing your book in Word, we recommend just leaving the page size set to standard, US letter or A4 usually. This standard page size ensures that any included images will be at least large enough for the iPad. If you format a document that mimics a common e-reader screen, some of your images, in fact most of them, will be too small for larger e-readers or tablet devices. And if you stick to the standard word size, you'll still be able to use that document in other um, formats and, and uh, can print it out on computer paper. You'll be able to easily convert it to easily printable PDF and so on. Having said that, a PDF file in the correct format will load fine into Apple's Book Reader. Kindle Reader, if it's done on the Mac, the iOS version will not, and many others. That being said, don't expect images and graphics to format nicely. Some do, some don't. Fixed layout? You've probably read a lot about this if you're looking at ebooks. Most ebooks are not fixed layout, and that's a good thing. There's a whole, um, a whole school of thought on this. But if you're looking to develop an ebook that works, go with Reflowable, which is the standard actually. You start out with your US letter size document, type it up, put it into Publisher, export it in suitable format to a PDF file, and it'll be good. Generally, people think that fixed layout's a good solution, but in practice, unless you're doing a really highly specified design, fixed layout is not what's required. Stylistic elements you can't force. These are things you can't control. So if you have your nice Word document and it's got any of these, forget them in an e-book. Drop caps? Nope. Hanging indents in e-books? Nope. Running headers and running footers in ebooks. Nope, because there's no concept of a fixed page, so you can't have headers and footers. The book reflow is based on the device. Body fonts in ebooks. Because a user can change what font they're reading in, just stick with the standard Times New Roman, Arial, Verdana, whatever you happen to have. Moby used to be preferable to Word files when sending them to a Kindle uh, reader, but now Kindle has its own requirements, and I quote from Kindle, for the best results, we recommend a Microsoft Word document, 
or a KPF file created with Kindle Create. Kindle Create is the best and safest option for KDP. Be careful with that. Covers in an ebook, your cover will be submitted as a separate file. It will also be inside your book. And you need a table of contents. And again, be very careful with this. Not all platforms will honour a clickable table of contents, and not all platforms, indeed, will honour table of contents. Except for Kindle Create, and here use a great deal of caution. Kindle on iOS will not create a suitable book nor a suitable table of contents. Indeed, if it's done correctly, it can even develop its own table of contents, which will, of course, trash any table of contents you're doing with yours. So there's nothing to stop you from creating the PDF file in one version for various platforms and another version to send to Kindle. And I'm more on this Kindle business later. Kindle Create particularly. On the Mac, we'll create a file suitable to go to Kindle Readers, but not the iOS one. Affinity Publisher can create table of contents that are clickable and export them to the PDF file option that is correctly selected. There are only some options in publisher's export file that will honour clickable links in your document. Use universal styles, keep it simple. Ebooks should be designed to render properly across most devices. The less you try to control your result, the better your ebook will look. Now this video will show you how to create an ebook template and a complete ebook that can be exported to the right PDF format and will read beautifully on Apple Books and many other platforms. It will also include a clickable table of contents. I encourage you with the end result to experiment with what you have in your document and what you leave out when it comes to covers and table of contents. Have multiple copies and experiment with ones that work and ones that don't. So enough talk. Let's go create our publisher document. I do apologise at the start for the length of this whole thing, but let's do it properly. Now, creating the preset. The new version, uh, 1.8.3, allows you to have presets and you can see I've got a couple of presets in the window here so open Affinity Publisher and select new document from the welcome window or go to file new and document do not press create to create the page that's the very last thing you need to do staying in the new document window select my presets from the options bar at the top just below where it says new document Set the document unit to inches, set the width to 8.5 and the height to 11 and the DPI is set to 300. It doesn't matter if there's a name in there already next to the plus sign and here it says custom because the moment you start typing in a new page width and a new page height that will, that will change to custom. Pages to one or more if you like but it's easier just to work with one page and there'll be less confusion. You can easily add more pages later and also default master should be checked. Image placement is prefer embedded. This is an ebook that you're going to spread around so it's only going to have, generally speaking, the cover. If you put other images in, in your document, don't expect them to turn up in the right place or the right size. Ebooks are not good with images. The name next to the little plus sign in the circle at the top will change to custom from whatever it was when you start entering information in that first layout screen. Do not click on the plus sign yet though. And do not press create yet to create the page. Now you can see I've got all the options expanded there. 
and still staying in this new document window, set the color to RGB slash 8 format and the profile to that. This will be suitable for an ebook cover you will add later. Check the tabs to set the margins to 1 inch on all sides or 1.25 at the bottom if you like, but sometimes it's better just to have it 1 inch all around. Set the bleed to 0 on all sides. You only need the bleed for printed books and this is not for a printed book. It's a good idea to leave the preset and template creation until you complete all these steps and then the save the preset just before you press create. Now note, this page is also the correct size for the front cover as well. Your setup will look like this so far. Now the preset. Click on the little plus sign in the circle. But don't do this until all the options are set correctly because I don't think you can back out of it. The undo doesn't work. There's your little plus sign with a custom and the preset will automatically be renamed from custom to unnamed one. Well, fancy that. The preset will appear in the My Presets window. So how do you give it a name? Go to that window and right click on that name, unnamed one and the option to rename it will appear. That's pretty simple. Enter the name ebook template standard reflowable. Well that's what I used because I didn't give it the document name or the book name. This is a template and it's a reflowable template. I can't confuse it with anything else. Now press OK to create the preset name. And you can see there, ebook template standard reflowable now pops up in your presets. Think of the presets as like a template, but because I'm a bit pedantic in some areas, I'm going to also create a template. Your new preset will look like this. Check all the settings. If you make a mistake, just right click on that preset and delete it. Correct the settings and recreate it the same way. Now click on the new preset and then click on create. You click on the new preset first, that, the blue highlighted preset in the window. That will ensure that the name appears at the top next to the plus sign, ebook temp, you can see there. It's part of the full name. So your new document, when you create it, will be the right name. And there's your new document. But notice at the top, it's untitled. Well, that's okay. We'll get there. New template. Go to File, Export as Template, and save your document as a template. So you'll have a preset and a template. And you can use whichever one you choose. I keep all my templates in a folder on the Mac called Affinity Templates. And within that folder I've got publisher, photo and designer. So I've got templates in all of those. You can't have too many saved files. Now for a new document go to file, save as and save your document as a file. File, save as remember. And that's where you can give it a good document name. You can call it by the story's name if you like. And in this case, in my case, it's the Dragons of Sara Sara. Now, let's move on to creating the actual book, shall we? Adding the cover. We're going to insert your cover image. You have your book. You've pressed create, remember, and you've saved it as... And you can see up in the top there now, it's called ebook template for export to PDF. That's what I called it. Very dull, I know. I didn't call it Dragons of Sara Sara because for this exercise, it doesn't matter. So select your picture frame rectangle tool. Place your position mark on the top left and the inner margin and drag out the frame to fit the entire margins frame. So from top left to bottom right of the margins area. And you can see it creates a picture frame there. Within the image, place marker in place. 
With the image place marker in place, sorry, a lot to go through here, select File and Place. Locate your cover image and drop it into place. Click on the image to place it within the margins. Generally it shows up there and you can move it around a little bit and it has those markers there and just drop it into place. It looks like it doesn't fit. That's all right. You can correct that in a moment. Adjust with the slider to fit. That slider down the bottom, it's, um, it allows you to adjust the size. It doesn't matter if the margins do not meet the image size. That's a text margin. It really doesn't affect the image. Now this image dimensions are 1333 by 2000 pixels or 113 by 169 millimeters. That's a good size for an ebook cover because it will display on an iPad quite nicely, displays on a Mac quite nicely, and even on an iPhone when it's squeezed down, it will still display nicely and be readable. It's a good size. Now, adding the text. We add your story by starting with a new page and adding text frames. You can see what we've got there. Select Add Pages. Just add one page because we can automatically add as many pages as needed in a moment. And you can see when you've clicked on Add Page, number of pages one, you want to insert it after the image, page one. Master page is unticked, just leave it there and click OK. The pages will show page numbers in the left column, but ignore them. They don't show up in the finished document. Page numbers only show up if you put them there. And you can see we've got the image and we've got what is essentially page two, but the first page where your text will go. Now you need to add a text frame. So you select the text frame tool, drag it out and place a text frame on the new page. Generally they look like that with a ruler at the top. That immediately tells you it's a text frame. And assuming your document is longer than one page, we can auto create any needed new pages. So if you think, oh, my book is 600 pages long, do I put 600 pages in? No, just put one. Because when you add the text from your Word document, you can cause it to auto create as many pages as you need. Just the right amount. Not too many, not too few. A bit like Goldilocks and the Three Bears. Just right. Now, the text frame on the new page is now ready for text from your Word document. Very important and difficult to spot this one. Note this little option. It means shift plus click to auto flow text. I will explain. Now, if you aren't looking for this, you will miss it. You can see your text frames got those little triangles just near the top on the left hand side, just near the bottom on the right hand side or halfway down towards the bottom. Look on the bottom of your screen and you'll see three options. Click to flow text out to another frame. No, don't use that one. And hold the, that key down to copy the frame. No, don't use that one. Hold the shift key down to auto flow. That will be the one you want. So let's go and have a look at how it works. A little bit more complex, go slowly. Locate your Word or text document. Okay, your Word documents in My Documents, for example. Select File and Place from your publisher menu. And when you click it, the text will appear on the first page. But wait. You can see on that page there, very, very small, I know, but it, um, I think it's my name and possibly some copyright information. I forget, it's very small. And you think, Oh my God, that's all of my book in, in three words. No, it's not. Just wait. There's more. The text is input into the document, but of course there is more than one page of it. And red handles appear to warn you of this fact. Top left, red handles. 
bottom right, red, red triangle, and the red triangle with a squiggly thing next to it. Beware of that squiggly thing. Remember I spoke about this almost hidden option. It means shift plus click to auto flow text. So next slide, please. Be careful, place the mouse pointer on the little red marker, the little red triangle on the margin, not on that red squiggle to the side of the triangle. Now hold down the shift key and click that little red triangle, not the marker, the little red triangle. And of course, you've got your document in there waiting. Those signals are red and you can see I've got a little bit of top text up the top, Robert Chalmers, the Dragons of Sarasara Awakening. So there we go. Hold down the shift key, click the red marker, and presto bumpo. Pages and text are auto inserted. It can take a moment for a large file, so if you've got, you know, 160 pages or something in your document, just give it a moment to suck it all in, and it will pop up there. Now, if you click on the page, for example, I've got there, chapter one, just click on that page to highlight your text. You'll see the li document linking marks are displayed on each page. That tells you that's all linked text. And it's going from one triangle to the next one across pages. Very, very tricky and very useful. Now, setting up the table of contents. Not a necessity really for an ebook, but sometimes they're nice. They're nice to have. Some devices will work well with a table of contents, while others just ignore it. And some, like Kindle on iOS, will completely trash it. And you'll think, ah, what the heck is going on? And this can seem complex to do at first. So think carefully about whether you want a table of contents or not. Does it really matter in, a, uh, in an ebook? You're rarely going to start from the from the first chapter because you can bookmark ebooks. Caveat utilitor. User beware. So first thing is to set up a page to hold the table of contents. Select the page you want to have the TOC page follow. And in my case, page six is just before the first chapter. Well, just before chapter one. You can see I've got page six there. Now go to Add Page again, up the top there, the little square, little rectangle actually. And when you've added one page, following page six, your new page will appear. Drag out a text frame for the page, then go to Text, Table of Contents, Insert Table of Contents. There's it is there, go to Text, Insert Table of Contents. You're now on page 7, remember, with a text frame. And there's your table of contents. Ignore all the settings on the left-hand side. You can change those when you're a bit more familiar with what you're doing. Remember, this is an e-book and we want very basic settings in an e-book. Bullets, drop caps, things like that won't work in an e-book. Now, we just need to populate the table. And, of course, it says... No table of contents entries found. Well, that stands to reason. But you can see in there there's heading 1 and heading 2. Both have ticks in them. Now these two things are standard HTML5 options. And remember that just about everything in an ebook is HTML5. So, reselect the pages tab. And this will hide the Table of Contents tab. Your TOC will display no Table of Contents entries found because we haven't actually put any in yet. Double-click your first chapter page to select it. And you can see I have it there. Go to your first chapter heading, highlight your chapter heading, and in the Styles tab, change the style to Heading 1. And if you look down there somewhere... There it is, about halfway down, heading one. I'll just tick on that, and that makes chapter one look like a heading. And there it is. Heading one, chapter one, and your chapter heading will now look like that. 
To check you have it right, go to Text, Table of Contents, Update Table. When you click this, you should see Chapter 1 appear on the Table of Contents page. Very neat. Go through your book and set each chapter heading to Style Heading 1, or all the way through. Then again do Text, Table of Contents, Update Tables, and you should now have a standard table of contents. Do not slip up and use fancy text or headings. Most devices will make it look awful, or just ignore it altogether. Your table of contents is now completed. Now it's gone over two pages, and you can see there page 7 and page 8 in my case. So you go to page 8, well you have to create a page 8, put a text frame in it, go back to page 7, put your pointer on the little tri red triangle, hold the shift key down, press the triangle, and the remaining table of contents will flow to the next page. It won't affect the rest of your document. But you have to do these steps carefully. Now, exporting to PDF so others can read it. Phew, nearly there. Because we want to be able to use clickable links in our table of contents, the export starts with PDF digital high quality. 300 dpi and all pages. Don't be tempted to use anything else. You'll spend ages tramping around the bush. Just accept it that that's what you do. Give the export file a name and location where you can easily find it later. Go through it carefully and correct any errors in the master. Re-export again when ready. You can open the exported document in a reader of your choice. And you can see the finished PDF opens in at least these three readers on the Mac and performs nicely. Clickable links in the table of contents all work. Again on the Mac. Again with Kindle. It seems to work on Mac but not on iOS. Because to get it to work on iOS, you have to put it through the Kindle Create app. And that really trashes the table of contents and drops out the cover file. Very nice of them. I wish they'd be consistent. But on the Mac, you can load that PDF file straight into Kindle and it works beautifully. And as you can see there, I've got Kindle, Apple Books and Adobe Reader. And oddly enough, Adobe Reader even behaves like a bit of a reader in that case. It's not one of my favourite programs, but what else have we got? And that's it. We're just about at the end. Thank you very much for watching. Beautiful scene there. Looks like where I live. Just down the road. Ten minutes walk from here with the dog. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Your subscription gives me the encouragement to keep going and to make long, long, long video tutorials like this one. <laughs> Thanks for sticking with me.